my dear friends welcome to rajashekar classes on applied data science with python this is lecture number 67 in this lecture i will continue my discussion on descriptive statistics we know that descriptive statistics can be categorized into three broad categories based on how many variables are looking to summarize they are univariate bivariate and multivariate let's take a look at univariate descriptive statistics univariate descriptive statistics include the measures of frequency measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion we will discuss each in turn when you have a single variable measures of frequency seek to explain how often a particular data point occurs within your data this can be done by frequency tables which is just a tabular representation of your data corresponding to frequencies or you can use histograms to visualize this i already discussed about histograms and bar charts in data visualization that is in my previous lectures i request you to go through histograms which are which i discussed in me in my previous lectures now this is summary of statistics just go through this particular slide there are measures of central tendencies like arithmetic mean this this slide you can read it, the in this arithmetic mean weighted mean median mode percentile but geometric mean harmonic mean can also be considered as central tendency but they are not that frequently they are not that frequently used in many data analysis problems whereas, whereas measures of dispersion we will skewness kurtosis range interquartile range variance standard score coefficient of variation all these things i will discuss in future classes time being just have an idea of this slide and try to understand the difference between central tendency and measures of dispersion now what is measures of central tendency measures of central tendency seek to find find the find the point around which your data is centered that this point is important Me, that measures of central tendency means it's a point it's a point around which your data is centered this sentence this is golden sentence it is a point around which your data is centered let me repeat again and again measures of central tendency is a point around which your data is, is centered and there are there are several measures that you can use uh, so in simply i can say average is a measures of central tendency let me say like this a single number to describe the characteristics of a set of data means simply i can say for example if i take number something like 16 17 here i have a simple data set uh, 16 17 uh, something like 18 Th these are the numbers how can i find uh, mean just i am adding there are nine numbers this 15 point if i find mean or average or arithmetic mean that is uh, measures of sense. this is one type of one type of measures of central tendency i can say measures of central tendency is a single number which describes the entire data we will try to understand we will try to analyze this commonly this arithmetic mean is called as mean it is the average of group of numbers applicable for interval and ratio data what does it mean interval data means if i say something like 2000 comma 
2020. This is an interval. This is an interval data. This, this particular data is known as interval data. Ratio data means that may be height or that may be weight. Heights and weights are can, can be considered as uh, ratio data. Why? Because this points are allowed 10.5, 10, 9, 9.5 like this. This type of data, ray, uh, heights, weights means uh, points are allowed 10.5, 2.5, 3.5, 7.8, something like that. This is interval data means this is an interval 200 to, to 2000 to 2020. Means this your arithmetic mean is applicable for interval data as well as ratio data. It is not applicable for nominal or ordinal data. What is nominal data? Nominal data means that may be gender. What is gender means? That may be male, that may be female. You cannot apply uh, arithmetic mean for uh, males, uh, for gender. For example, male if I say 1, uh, female if I say 0, 0 plus 1 by 2 means that, that, that will not give any significant information. Therefore, arithmetic mean is not, up, not applicable for nominal data then what is ordinal data ordinal data i can say something like professor associate professor even i can say uh, assistant professor this this is one type of uh, uh, ordinal data even i can say grading of students grades of students a grade b grade c grade this is another type of ordinal data or uh, that may be review on on some particular product satisfied unsatisfied uh, something like this uh, you may you might have seen all these are known as uh, ordinal data means you cannot apply arithmetic mean or simply mean on nominal data and ordinal data even if you apply it will not give any significant information or useful information yes this is affected by extreme values this is affected by outliers anyway i will try to explain this in few uh, after few seconds even we will try to understand with simple python code just time being understand that this arithmetic mean is affected by extreme values this is simple formula how one can calculate arithmetic mean everybody can understand this simple formula anyway we will try to take one simple numerical examples let me say i have a data set 60 20 10 40 50 30 how can i calculate population mean i already discussed what is population in my previous in lecture number 65 how can i calculate population mean sigma xi by n there are six elements i must add these six elements and i must divide with six therefore what is my population mean here it is 35 Anyway, let me take impact of outliers. The same data set which we are using, but here I am taking this thousand as an outlier. If, if you calculate arithmetic mean again, what happens? Just see, you are getting 172.85, whereas in previous case you were getting 35, means it is uh, it is affected, it is affected by outliers. Instead of x bar, let me say this is mu. Therefore, it is this your population mean or simply mean or average is affected by this outlier. Why? Because previous uh, population means 35. Now you are getting 172.85 by introdu introducing an outlier. Therefore, your arithmetic mean is affected by outliers. It's simple and straightforward. Sample mean, let me say I have a sample. This sample consists of data 57, 86, 42, 38, 90, 66. I collected the sample from particular population. The sample mean is indicated by x bar, whereas population mean is indicated by mu, whereas sample mean is indicated by x bar. This is the sample mean. You are getting something like 63.167. Now, let me proceed. Mean of group data. What is this mean of group data? We will try to understand. This mean of group data is indicated by mu. This F is known as frequency. This M is known as class midpoint. Means F1 is frequency of first class. M1 is midpoint of first class. F2 is frequency of second class. M2 is midpoint of second class. So on by sigma Fi means that is F1 plus F2 plus so on Fn. We will try to understand. We will analyze this. How will it be? Just see calculation of 
group with data what is this group there is uh, it's an interval between 20 and 30 30 and 40 40 and 50 50 under 60 60 under 70 uh, 70 under 80 means uh, you can understand what is this language here you have frequencies uh, what you have to do after frequencies you must identify uh, middle points how how will it be how can i find uh, middle points these are the frequencies this uh, 20 plus 30 50 by 2 means it's 25 this is middle point 30 plus 40 70 by 2 means 35 40 plus 50 92 90 by 2 means 40 in similar manner 70 plus 80 by 2 means 75 these are the middle points what you have to do you have to multiply middle points with frequencies 25 into 6 that is 150 18 into 35 that is 630 11 into 45 that is 495 11 into 55 that is 605 this just i am multiplying adding this is sigma fm sigma fm means 2150 what is my sigma fi means 50 if i calculate what you are getting you are getting 43.0 this this is known as mean isn't it that is population mean what about weighted average what is up where one can find uh, applications of weighted average just uh, it's simple a simple formula just weighted average means uh, sigma x into w by sigma w we will try to understand with this weighted average with simple example just see this uh, this one uh, real time application weighted average means your uh, midterm marks has got some weightage and your uh, uh, final exam may have got some weightage uh, for example just see, suppose your midterm test score is 83 and your final exam score is 95 using weightage of 40 percent for midterm this 40 percent for midterm and 60 percent weightage for your uh, final exam score then what you have to do you have to compute weighted average of your scores and also if the minimum average for and a is 90 means to get to get a grade minimum you must get 90 marks will you earn a grade that's what it's that's what it says it is simple and straightforward question just see how can i calculate weighted average what what is your uh, marks your midterm marks is 83 whose weightage is 40 percent means 40 by 100 your uh, final exam score is 95 whose weightage is 60 percent means 0.6 by sigma w means that's what uh, that previous slide formula says w1 plus w2 40 percent plus 60 percent that is one you will get 90.2 you are getting to get a grade minimum you have to get 90 score as you are getting 90.2 i can say that you have got a you you earn a grade yes just go through this lecture in lecture number 68 we will try to understand these simple concepts with the help of Python programming. Thank you.